Welcome to Face the Facts. I am Nick Face, returning once again to our left side of me. We have Tom Smith. Welcome, Tom. How's it going? And welcome, Phil. Hello. Mr. Phil from NorCam TV. How are there you doing, go. Phil? Doing all right. Let's start it off first. We know the Celtics, they're going to the next round. But we're going to keep our flow going with how we're continuing this lovely journey here on Face the Facts with leading off with the Boston Bruins. The Bruins season has come to an end. Their season ended on Sunday this past week, and it was another loss against the Tampa Bay Lightning. The Lightning advance into the next round. They'll be facing the Washington Capitals. In the Western Conference, we also have a winner after a really, really good Game 7 between the Winnipeg Jets and the Nashville Predators. The Winnipeg Jets will be facing the uh, Golden Knights of Vegas. So that's our hockey rundown right now. We're going to lead it off with Tom here. And we're going to lead it off with talking a little bit about what, ha- what went wrong with the Bruins. Uh, well, I think this comes back to our conversation that we had at the end of the season where we said that a better matchup for the Bruins in the first round would be uh, Philly or New Jersey. Yeah. And they didn't get that because of their terrible play against Florida throughout the season. So Correct. they ended up being in second, which ended up getting them Toronto in the first round, which meant that they were most likely going to be facing Tampa in the second round. And we all knew that, and we didn't think... Bruins were exhausted from facing the Lightning. Yeah. yeah. Just I, basically, from my, from my overview, from watching it all, they got manhandled. I, I think part of it is because their series went seven games. Yes, they did win the first game, and they came out with their legs moving, but seven games puts a lot of wear and tear on the body. And when you only have to uh, wait like a week and a half, yeah, you're, you're going to be a little sluggish from the first game. But in the playoffs, everybody jumps back pretty quick. Well, one of the things that we saw from that Lightning series was we saw a great game one. The game one that was there, Bruins came out flying. It looked like the Bruins that we've seen from the whole season. But after that, it just got real flat. We got some injuries that were related to some play for, for other players being counted on to step up that you had to lean on, which was kind of difficult. Yeah, it was, uh, it was interesting. I, I think there are a lot of things that I think Cassidy could have done early on, like putting in different players, changing up the lineup, shuffling the lines, sitting, sitting star players. I think, I think he, um, after the whole Marshawn Callahan thing, I think he could have sat Marshawn a game and been like, "Listen, you need to get your act together. You're, you're not." That would have been a bold anymore. move. I think. I don't know if I would have agreed on that one right there. Well, they didn't do much. They didn't do much in the other four games. That no, they, lost, they didn't so do much. It wouldn't have made a difference, I don't think. They didn't do much. A fire needed to be lit into them. I do agree. Is Cassidy to blame for them being an early exit here? No. I think it was. I think it was the defense. I mean, if anybody watched the game, uh, game three and four after our last our last airing, um, you would have noticed that he put Giante, he put Donato in, uh, not for the players that we were hoping that he would do, but he still put them in and didn't really do much. I would have played Donato throughout the entire playoff just just to build up the experience and get him out there. I would have put him in the Tampa series. I definitely would have started him in the Tampa series because. That would have been a lot of help with their speed. Um, I don't think it would have made too much of a difference in, th- in the Toronto series. Now, your, your guess on putting Gionta in, he played game three. Not a great performance. And I think that that has to do with rust. I, he, there were a few mistakes uh, that he did make. I think part of it is because he's older, he needs to be playing more games. He should have been playing in the Toronto series. He has, he probably has the most experience on that Bruins roster in the playoffs. Who should have been the players that we should have been not seeing as much then in the playoffs that were counted on? Rick Nash. Okay, one. that's one. He only scored, what, two, three goals maybe? In the and two of those came playoffs. in that game one. Right. And that was really a nothing kind of thing. Right. Um, Riley Nash. I... Seemed like he went south. But he's a good defensive player. The last month yes, of the he season. Doesn't, yes, he doesn't produce in, on the offense as much as people would expect, but he definitely is a good key on the, power, on the penalty kill, um, which you probably noticed in Game 3 because their penalty kill wasn't as good because mm-hmm. Riley Nash was sat in favor of Brian Gianna. David Backus, David Krejci, overall thoughts on them? Definitely needed David Backus to get that physical edge. Yeah. Um, 
But did. was he? But was he? It, you saw it a little bit in game three. I thought his playoff was t- – I, I would have given him a D for the playoffs. D, a D grade. I thought it was bad. I think part of it was because Krejci was getting too fancy with the puck and didn't want to cough it up as quickly as he should have. Krejci gets a D minus, and he would have got an F if it wasn't for the goal. Yes, he made some good defensive plays, but they need to count on him to score goals as well, and he didn't do it. No, it, it, My it, offensive performance player of the playoff, obviously, was Pasternik and Bergeron, but they were too, they were too sporadic. They weren't consistent enough. Marshan, I think, gets a C. Uh, yeah, um, his, I mean, his offense was great. His defense was great. But somehow the old rat-nosed uh, player came back into the playoffs. But is it because he has such a bullet on, the back, on his back? Do you think he's playing scared out there? I think it all came down to... Getting slashed by Anton Strawman in game was it two or three? A little bit. It must. It was. It was game two that he got slashed, and they they didn't get the call. And I think that put a fire under his butt and brought the old Marshawn back. And I mean, I liked it, but looking another player, <laughs> looking another player's face isn't isn't the right way to go. Oh, yeah. That was great. I, I it mean, was pretty great. I mean, for uh, uh, for yeah, us, us, for yeah, us, yeah. it's hilarious. But yeah. at the same time, like Doesn't you're sitting there as a. Funny, I got a funny story. Oh. I had a buddy who was on a plane to uh, go to Georgia yesterday, and lo and behold, Brad Marshan is in the line with going on the airline. He's a tiny guy, right? It's He's his not... birthday. They end today. up sitting behind him. Oh wow! So my buddy asked, "Can I give you a lick?" Oh no. <laughs> I'm sure he's like, he cracked up. Oh, good. He cracked up. Well, yeah, Mar- Marshall like, off the he's, He said he put his tongue away for good. <laughs> <laughs> well, after that, yeah. after that last incident with Ryan Callahan, the NHL sat down with him and uh, Cam Neely or um, Sweeney and was like, "Listen, uh, imagine you, how can you take that seriously?" The like, NHL comes, uh, Mr. Marshan, um, you're not allowed to lick the players yeah, anymore. Like, not ice cream cones. I guess, yeah. He's gonna, or he's gonna, toads. I don't he's know. He's gonna start getting. Um, like fined or suspended if he keeps doing it. So. <laughs> we have a licking rule now. Yeah, there's. You've been uh, no licking a anybody in sports. For five licks, you get two, <laughs> and then you're suspended. You get Did fined he get two. to the center of the Tootsie Roll pop? No, maybe. I think maybe, so a little well, bit. Well, because uh, well, do people? I mean, I imagine like, does the team really feel? Do they protect Marshan a bunch? If like he gets in that position, is that what? I think they get fed up a little bit with it. Uh, well, yeah. that's yeah. That's, yeah. Is that the the real issue? Right? That's that's a situation where Bergeron or Char needs to go. Listen, you you need to cut that out, or you're gonna be like. Those are the two I would say. Yeah. yeah. Especially Bergeron with being on his line for so many years. Yep. So it's but. I think, as a hockey fan, I think it's disgusting. As a Bruins fan, I think it's absolutely <laughs> downright hilarious. Now I'm interested yeah. to hear your opinions on Tuka Rask's play. I really would love to see what our grades are with him because he had such a mixed bag of a playoff. Do you have any particular grade, Phil, that you give him? A, B, C, D, F? Yeah, from what I saw and from what I read, and granted it's not as much or uh, <laughs> yeah, as extensive as you guys, but I, I, from what I heard and from what other uh, bits I read and saw, it seemed like he didn't have as much help as he usually does no. uh, defensively. So, like, he was left out to dry a bit. Yep. And But... Truth be told, you know, he, he can still, there's still some lollipop like plays or like. Brain farts. That, yeah, that he yeah. could have stopped, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it, in Tampa's goalie, is he that much better or is it just kind of an even uh, split? I don't think so. I think this yeah. year was a fluke year for Vasilevsky. I, I yeah. definitely don't think he, I don't see him being as good next year as he was this year. Because they didn't have to rely on him, <coughs> per se. No. That, it's amazing Tampa, what happens yeah. when you have a good defense. Well, that's it. Yeah. Tampa's well, defense was excellent. But Bruins also made them look pretty good, too. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah they well, did. The Bees had a good defense all year, but though, right? But for... Uh, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like at the, at right. the start, it looked a little shaky. It didn't yeah. look like... But then once they hit November and December, it was... The injuries were the main issue with the defense because yeah. Krug went out in the playoff. That was a big... That oh, was a yeah. big loss. Huge Brandon loss. Carlo went out early. He didn't have him at all during the playoffs. That was big. Which means you had to insert Kevin Miller up to the top line for D. And or bring the second up, line. And bring up me. Matt Grizzlick, which yeah. caused that. Grizzlick had a terrible game playoff. Yeah. Terrible. He was, he was, his name was called way too much when the pucks were, when, when goals were scored. Yep. His, his play, 
I don't understand why he continued to play out there. Like, I would have rotated in Wingles and may, maybe like Nick Holden or other couple of players out there. Wingles was offense. Excuse me. I meant Nick Holden. Sorry, I corrected well, myself. Nick, Nick Holden, I mean, even though he played one game, he was, he was, a, black a, he was a stud. Yep. He was a stud in that, in that game four. So, or game five, sorry. Um, yeah, defense was, I mean, for, across the whole playoffs. But McQuaid. McQuaid I'm even done with. And it, as a whole, and over the entire both the two rounds of the playoffs, I give Rask a, a C. In the Toronto series, I give him a D minus. There were some games that he he did pretty good, but yeah. it wasn't his fault. Yeah. Um, and then in the Tampa Bay series, he, I got to give him like a C plus because I mean it wasn't his fault. No. He he played great. He they didn't score they didn't score too many goals in the in the four games that they played um, yeah. or that they won. It was just the defense gave them way too many chances, and the offense couldn't do anything. Is the future bright for the Bruins? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, this I, was kind of – people need to understand, too, that this was kind of a surprise in a way. Yeah. Was, I uh, mean, coming into this season, I don't think many fans thought that they were going to be playoff caliber or Stanley Cup caliber. It was a young, it was a young team. I, they, they, got, they have a lot of young talent. Um, they're, they're still – the defense is still pretty solid. They, I mean, I think the pressure just got to them in the playoffs. Because what do you do for change? What needs to change? What do they need? Well, like I texted you the other day, um, <clears throat> Chris Letang could be up for free agency, and that would be a huge signing. If they, they have enough money signing. in the cap to sign him, they could trade. They could trade Krejci and free up some space. Who they, wants him? I think a lot of teams could use him. I would get rid of him. There's there are a lot of teams I think that could use him, especially right now. Where I mean. There, there are teams that are fast-paced, that are speedy, that aren't as physical that he could be on. Calgary. Calgary could probably use him. Uh, Arizona could probably use him. But Arizona could use about anybody. Well, Arizona, I mean, Antiranta played great for them this past season. I think Arizona could be a competing team next year. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, it would, be, it would be huge signing to get Crystal Tang. Uh, but I, I don't – I mean, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh's a little short on cash too, so it, it will be interesting to see. Now, Latang is one name. That's a defensive guy that could definitely help. Is there anybody on the offense that needs to step in and help? We love the first line. I think we're in agreement there. But I think after the first line, you get too much of a dip. I think um, – I mean, I – Get rid of Rick Nash. I don't think he's. No, he's gonna. not coming back. He's gone. So that brings up Ryan Donato. Um, I mean, there there have been rumors going around the entire league that they're going to trade. They they could trade or um, not re-sign one of the young guys. I know Danton Heinen's a name up there. I know Jake DeBrusque's a name up there. But I think DeBrusque's made his name. I he, think he's going to be here. He needs to stay. Yeah. Um, I I definitely agree with that. I think Danton Heinen could be a good guy to. Shoe away. Yep. Uh, he disappeared in the playoffs. Yeah. He he did a lot for the Bruins, but I don't think he's a Bruins caliber player. It, was, it wasn't enough. No. No. Um, and then the big st- big one. Is Tuka Rask back next year? What do you guys think? In, in a league so... Are you a Tuka guy, Phil? Eh, I'm not so much on Tuka. Yep. I, I mean, I, as far as I know, he has an upside, but he also seems Every, like he doesn't have a It seems like whenever the Bruins seems go like wrong, everybody have... wants to blame Tuka. Yeah, sure. But I think with a good they've, defense, Tuca's better. They, they've always wanted to blame Tuca ever since Tim Thomas left the team and he came onto the team. I, what if he did this for a trade? I was thinking about it yesterday because Pekka Rene got pulled last night in the Nashville series. What if you trade Rene and Rass together? Do you think Nashville would bite on that? And would you take Pekka Rene? I'd take Rene. I don't think Nashville would bite on it. You don't think they would? Uh, I, I really don't think they would. I, they were talking about him in the game last night. They were saying he's the face of the franchise, and I, I, How I do don't see it. you pull him, it. though, last night? Because that's two seasons in a row that he's cost them. Those goals were bad. Was terrible. Again, so. It, it, it reminded me or? a lot of Rask. The, the first one especially. Like, I, I don't even know how that went in. I really don't. His, I don't his, his skate was against the post, and I, must, I mean, I don't know. His foot must have just not been far enough down on the ice. I don't I, I looked at the replay, and I was like, I, I still understand. How they were the President's in. Cup trophy winner, correct? Yep. Well, back to your theory again. Many President's Trophy winners do not end up winning the Stanley Cup. The last one that won it was uh, Chicago back in 2013 against, guess who? Bruins. Yeah. Bruins. Yeah. So, um, 
We'll stay with you with uh, any kind of news that we hear for the Bruins during the offseason. It should be an interesting one to see how they assemble the next year's team together. Um, it was a very good season for the Bruins, ended a little bit short. So we're hoping next year that they gained a little experience, they got some good exposure, and they're ready to rock and roll for another great well, season. On, a, on another uh, hockey note, anyway, just not a Bruins note, but um, San Jose choked in the playoffs once again. Yep. which wasn't really a shock to many people yep. or many hockey fans because Vegas. Um, <clears throat> and Washington finally got past the Pittsburgh Penguins in the second yep. round to move on to the conference final for the first time. In I think it's going to be the Lightning and uh, the Golden Knights for my Stanley Cup prediction. That's my Stanley Cup choice. I, th I think it's going to be the Caps. I think the Caps are going to yeah. beat the Lightning. I don't think they're going to beat uh, Vegas, but Tom Wilson's back for the start of the conference finals for mm -hmm. the Capitals. Uh, they're working on getting healthy again because Backstrom got hurt. Yep. Uh, so he might not play in game one of the conference finals, but um, I think Ovechkin's ready to keep moving on. And I think Vegas wins the whole thing. Uh, I mean... I think they do. I think Vegas That's wins. Kind of I, we, we, said that at, we said that since the end of the season. We said that at the start yep. of the playoffs. I said that back in their home open, their first very first game of the season. So, oh really? Yeah. You you thought uh, I put it down. I put it down expert. on social media. Yeah. I put it down on Facebook. I put it down on Twitter. So you I, put money down. I, the, I didn't. Hey, I hey, and hey, I'm hey, I'm kind of wishing I, I kind of hey, wishing I'm sure I did. Vegas could get you all set though. Yeah, sure. Well, that's let's, interesting. Let's change our it gears. Is. I know yeah. you're uh, chomping at the bit right now about the, uh, <laughs> the uh, Boston Hockey Celtics. <laughs> We're yeah. all set with that one. My my uh, my expertise is. <laughs> Backs against the wall, expectation when Hayward and Kyrie and Evan Tice and Marcus Smart all went down towards mm -hmm. the end was, eh, maybe we'll win a first round. We'll see. They win the first round against the Bucks. They win the next round against Philly. This team is just so resilient. We'll see. I mean, resiliency can get you so far. And I won't say, I, well, I don't say this often. And I'm kind of beside myself here thinking about it right now, but you were 100% correct. They won. Say that again. I, I didn't well, hear that enough. No. For those at home, if you want to slow it down. I'm only kidding. Well, those, wow. For those Ooh. at home. <laughs> Ooh. No, I mean, I, but I think whether it was blind luck or just <laughs> like, yeah, the one in five. Uh, no, you had some conviction that they win in five, and I didn't necessarily think you were wrong, but I yeah. didn't. I didn't have that much faith per se. I thought, and I think I was. I think I was right in a lot of ways that if Philly played like they did the last game, game five, maybe you have a longer series. I don't know, but I'll, I'll say this. Uh, yeah, I did not believe in the Celtics, but I mm -hmm. think I don't know. It, it's 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 tough because these guys are great. Well, and you forget about Marcus Smart. Oh, they they got lucky in Game Three. I mean that that was very they got very the combo, lucky. Yeah, yeah. I think they uh, the stupidity of the Sixers really caught up to it them. It really was stupidity. Or just, I really have it was. They just didn't know. And also, you know, Redick, the veteran, uh, flubbed up quite a bit too. I mean, it was everyone. And the Siege just kind of were focused. They were more focused. And you can talk the about focus, like focus, the mental toughness, the belief was there. Well, confetti on the, and we talked about this last time, like confetti on the. Well, no, I don't think we did. We weren't. We didn't. We didn't because it was game. We, it was only we, two. We games. had a confettied mess on yeah. Saturday. We did, and that was the thing. That was my Which favorite. Which is hysterical. Well, and they thought, you know, they and I can understand from that vantage point. You think he got the three, but even I think I was listening in the car for the last like five minutes of that game. Yeah. My wife and I were driving back from dinner because we wanted to watch the game outside because it was a beautiful day and. Like eating, you know, watching. It was just kind of crazy going back and forth, just listening to Maxwell and Grandy like go nuts over. And I thought it was over when they solo, you know, lay up to Brown, and that should have been. And then there's this great play slash hold by it was Ilisova. like one point four seconds left on it was the like clock three or something, something it was, like it was that. Something it was crazy. very limited amount of time. But they managed. Bellinelli made a great shot, but also Ilisova held on a pick. He like pretty much uh, grabbed uh, Rosier and held him for like a, a second. Yep. And he was able to uh, he was able to get free, but not enough time to really yep. get in Bellinelli's face. But it was a I enjoyed every like the last game game five was amazing. It was crazy. That, that was last such a that was just so back and forth. And that's all Mark like the last minute or so, just watching something online, just uh, hammering into my head the fact that you probably 
you don't want to admit, maybe. And maybe you've come around and you've admitted that Marcus Smart is a valuable asset. Marcus Smart. Here's, here's my thing on it. <laughs> he's got, he has to think about it for a second right, here. I'm picking my words. You can't <laughs> commit too hard. To Without <laughs> Marcus Smart on the floor for the Celtics right now for this team, they don't win. Yeah, they don't win that series. They don't, they don't win, win that, that game. They don't. He Marcus Smart is such plays. a difference maker, and I see it, you know. You see the light. See the light right there, right yeah. on the court, with him being installed into the lineup. Yeah, and he can, we've talked about this before, and I, he, he can chuck it up with the best of them, like, or, and the worst with them. Because he, he can. can, he'll throw up, and there was um, the waning minutes in game five, he threw up a three-pointer, I'm like, oh, what are you doing? But, <laughs> yeah. uh... He, but he'll make up. He'll be on the other end, and he'll be, you know, a defensive play against uh, Sarchik or against, uh, you know, just a block or even just an offensive garbage, not a garbage rebound, or they call it sometimes garbage point, but he was there for the rebound of uh, Tatum's miss mm -hmm. to put him up by, uh, it was either, no, the, no, it was the tie at, tie at 109 or 107, I forget. But, yeah, he, he was in every play in that uh, last uh, last minute. Like, what went wrong for Philly? What, eh, you know, they didn't make, uh, Reddick doesn't make that three-pointer. Uh, they didn't drive the ball enough, and they just didn't make some shots. I mean, they played a really good game. Sarchuk had a really great game. He had like 27 points, 10 rebounds. Mm -hmm. And he's uh, he's not a journeyman. He's a, a starting, like, power forward, tall guy. Like him and Bede are a good, like, one-two punches, like two guys who can, and Bede can shoot, too, mid-range. I have a three. new favorite villain. And Bede, is that... Yeah, he's great. He's awesome. I like. He's we're, going. We're in your head. Yeah, we're in your yeah. head. He needs to keep that mask on <laughs> for his entire career. No, it's Darth Vader S. It's perfect, uh, Patrick. But Tom, yeah, you were. Uh, we were talking earlier. You were bringing up. Yeah, in uh, Game Four, while the Celtics were losing, um, and Bede was going to. I think it was Marcus Morris. It might have been Rochier, but one of them. He was going up to them. We're in your head. We're in your head. And, yeah. He, whoever it was just kept going three and oh three and oh <laughs> but i mean when i watched game three and four and 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 i'm assuming five was one kind of the same way but um they philly looked pretty good in the last three games of the series or at least the two that i watched anyway and didn't make it seem like they got dominated by the celtics in the first two losses um but i noticed i watched i watched game three because we were talking about it after um we aired the last show, and I was like, uh, I'll, I'll watch it, I guess. Um, nothing better to do. <laughs> nothing yeah. better to do. Uh, and I noticed Ben Simmons in the paint kept throwing up shots like he said he should. And yeah. It was... I, think, I think that got Philly kind of back into the series a little bit. Uh, it definitely helped a little. And I was like, oh, well, Phil, Phil, is, Phil is like, yeah. I was like, I, I kept texting Nick. I was like, we keep being right with a lot of stuff going on on the show. Everything we say, we keep being right about it. It's, it's weird. Well, no, I mean, we watch enough of it. and We are, we are the real experts. Yeah, of course, yeah. We well, are. I mean... And we know what we're talking about. Well, no, I say that. I say that with the, big, with the, uh, the greatest straight face. Yeah, we are the experts. Salt. Yeah. Take we're it as you kidding. will. With, with the, we have plenty of salt you can take uh, with everything we say. <laughs> as many grains as you want. But, yeah, not just that. Like, if you, even if you play the game, like, it's not the same, obviously, as the NBA or anything else. But even if you're playing the game where you just watch it, you see where these people are. Because you're a bird's eye, you right. know, if you and you... And he's, Ben Simmons is great. I mean, he might have uh, kind of pooped his pants a little in this, or like a little dribbler down the leg every now and again. But he had some, even game five, he had some great moves. And he, there was a con, he travels quite a bit. And in my head, I'm like, I don't understand what travel is anymore. Because no. I know they changed the rules a couple of times with like a, you can do like a jump step. and then It's, it's like the refs throw the rule book away in the playoffs and just like, oh, sometimes, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, sometimes you're right. And I guess. I, I will say game four, that game was all for the refs. And I actually the didn't. The refs completely controlled that game. And I was covering a meeting for NorCam and I was just game casting. Uh, every now and again, so don't tell Board of Selectmen. But uh, Rob, no. yeah, <laughs> no, it was, but yeah, that's what I was told, and I read later that uh, the refs were really Real giving bad. it to him. Yeah, Real bad. Well, and it, and they were in it enough, but also they took a lot of bad shots too. Well, they were like, trying to push the series further and further into more games, but it that's didn't, what it didn't go in their favor. So hey, it's one of the uh, most the amazing stats that's going on right now in the playoffs has to do with Jason Tatum. Yeah. He's going on, oh. could be his ninth consecutive 20-point well, game. It'll be his game. eighth, I eighth, believe. Eighth, excuse but me. But he's, yeah. he's already committed to seven, yeah. Correct. And he's up there with some pretty good players up there. Paul yeah. Pierce, Bob Cousy. Lou, uh, Lou Alcindor. Yep. 
Which I think it's Robert like pa- all these all these Celtics greats yeah. are up there, and it just makes you think. Here's a kid who's 20 years old, can't even drink. Yeah. Who is an absolute superstar <laughs> yeah. in the NBA, superstar. Yeah. I just love how poised he is, how mature he is, and how much confidence that he just goes out on the court and just takes over. Yeah, it, he he doesn't. He's, he he. he it's just it's marvelous to watch him. He doesn't. Marvelous. He doesn't look antsy whatsoever. No. And it's it's just. I was watching. Uh, I think it was Game Four. He just was like, "I'm just gonna take the shot. See Danny what happens." Danny Ainge yeah. made such a good move with drafting Tatum with the third choice. Look at Fultz. Yeah. Sat on the bench. Well, I, wish I, I wish I could look at Fultz, but I never see him. He's never anywhere. <laughs> you can even. Right I know in the how wood. much right you like Ben Simmons. Wood. Yeah. Jason Tatum is better right now than Ben Simmons. Yeah, I think I think they're both. It's it's going to be crazy. Like, think about this. This is the first series, playoff series with these. Both teams are very young. We're going to be seeing Philly for a yeah, long of time. Of course, and it's going to be great. Like, they'll yeah. get theirs. We'll get ours. If they get another, if they get another decent like two way player who can both play defense and like have a decent shot, and Ben Simmons gets the shot, yeah, he'll be more dangerous than ever because he is. I mean, they. I hate when people say like, oh, he's the next LeBron. It's like, well, okay, whatever, but. Like, when they did it with the LeBron about, he's the next Jordan. And it's like, well, dude, just shut up. Just let them play and just, they'll be whatever. They'll, if you think they're a shadow of God knows who. Keep it to yourself. Don't let, it, <laughs> don't, don't See, let them take it to their they head. They don't well, do it I mean, as bad in the NBA. It's baseball that drives me absolutely oh, I would, crazy. Here we go. I would argue. I would argue. No, I, I mean, I guess. I think the media in the NBA can be just as horrific. They are. I they're think the media in any sport in general, can be. Yeah, just, I think but there's right. some yeah. baseball people that I want to ring up the flagpole sure. on certain people. Well, what are they? That's why we should have our show on ESPN. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. They'd love it. Be off the air in 10 minutes. We would be. We would but, be like Barstool, and they get thrown out after yeah. one episode. Well, I mean, sure. But they, yeah. If they give me something I can work with, then we can exactly. work Barstool. I'm not as big a fan of Barstool. I don't know why. I'm just met some. Oh, I like, love I love really? Barstool, but there was I, I just this this just classic. Yeah, Phil, one like, bite, everybody knows the rules. What? You don't know that? No. no <laughs> Pizza <laughs> review. All right. Yeah. One drink, everybody knows the rules. All right, fair enough. <laughs> is this water? <laughs> yes, right, it is. Um, <laughs> let's uh, preview this the Celtics so. and the Cavaliers series. Okay, here right. they come again. Yep. Queen James and crew, here they oh, come. Oh my lord. Oh, Why? Queen. Queen. Why? We got Why Queen defame? James. Why defame such a earnest man? Because we're Boston fans. I know. We'd love him if he were ours. I'm going to go out on a limb here. Oh, boy. I like the resilience. I think it continues. And I hope you don't think I'm out of my mind when I say this. But I see the Celtics winning this series in seven games. No, I don't think that's out of... I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility at all. Biggest factor here, once again, the Celtics are 7-0 at home. 7-0 and in the playoffs at home. Sure. I think that means nothing. Ultimately, I think it means nothing. Here, I think it's a great place for them to play, and they get a lot of, um, they feed off the energy. I think LeBron won't be affected by it. Maybe other Cavs will. But I think the Cavs teammates feed off of LeBron, and if he's doing okay, then they're all I just right. look at the series that they had against Toronto. Toronto had no defense to cover him. None. And the Celtics, they had, has, they had some, but I don't think it's anywhere close to what the Celtics can produce. But I also think they kind of laid an egg when they didn't, you know, they were up the whole game in game one. I think we talked about this last mm-hmm. time when they were down two, yep. nothing. And they just kind of let it kind of like sand through their hands, let it kind of go away. The, I still think this is the year that the King can be dethroned. I really yeah, believe I it is. He doesn't well, have a this team. This, this Cavs team has no Kyrie from last year. Nope. And in my eyes, they're worse this year than last. Yeah, I think they are, yeah. So it leads me to believe that Stevens has something in the, in the oven right now to prevent the Cavaliers from advancing to go to the finals. Uh, it, it blows my mind to even think that the Celtics can go to the finals with who they have right now. And you know what? If they win, they win. Great. But if they lose, I don't really even care. Because the expectation is, holy crap. You got to the finals with these people, and you're going to have Kyrie and Gordon Hayward back next year? Sure. Watch out. Well, I, I, I mean, I think the queen of hockey was the throne this year. Queen of basketball, why not? Throw in another sport. Why now, who's not? the queen of hockey? The Sydney, Sydney Crosby. Oh, Sid. The Sid kid. The kid. All right. Well, I thought Ovechkin isn't... Uh... The guy that's, no, the guy no, that's no. 27 and still has a cabbage patch for a beer. <laughs> yeah. Some people can't do it. <laughs> yeah. I, have, I have more pube-like... 
<laughs> like patchiness, but it's covered up by whiteness. Uh, that could be metaphoric. I don't know, but we'll see. They can use their own imagination. Yeah, <laughs> just do whatever. Um, but no, I. That's my over. Yeah. That's my overview. No, Love to hear your overview. I, I what do you dis- think? I don't disagree. I think yeah. we're all here. Like everybody has their own opinions on whatever. Whatever. Well, it is. not me. No. <laughs> well, not, I'm. Not, I'm not, not agreeing with anybody. Just remember, Phil. <laughs> I, I picked I'm the out. Celtics in five. Just yeah, remember. I know, yeah. Right. I mean, I, I think know. it's going to come down to the officiating in this series yeah. because they're going to be huge. Uh, it, 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 as always, it's yeah. Le, it's LeBron in the NBA. It's it's going to be. I LeBron think it's going to be a lot of checks to yeah. But no, he was manhandled uh, in Toronto and he wasn't getting calls. Well, that's because I mean, that's because Toronto was the number one seed, and I'm sure they're like, oh, let's have the number one seed try to win the game. I think that's a weird way to look at it, but I understand what you're getting. Like, I think the King in certain spaces will get to the line, but uh, look at the numbers. List playoffs, he hasn't gotten to the line that much. No, but uh, yeah, don't just discuss- like he's a guy who, not like the Sixers, when the game is on the line, LeBron can deliver. As we saw, that game three, like oh, see you later, and he just kind of like banked it like a unicorn, or like yeah, just like hey, take it easy, and uh, <laughs> it was great. It was fan- and like ugh, and it's just like and I thought like hey, you know maybe they'll win one in Cleveland and make a series. Then you know. I wanted Toronto to make something out of it. So did I. Well, and it, and I this, think a lot of people did. Yeah, of course. And it goes to show you that Indiana, the Pacers, who took them to seven, took uh, Cleveland to seven, and almost beat them, how much better Indiana is, and not to discount them. And yeah, the and Cleveland Cavs aren't as good as they were last year, but if Kevin Love and LeBron uh, play well, and if Korver gets up on the right foot, you'll have problems. Do I think there will be enough problems? No. And I even think the Seeds could do this in five or six. Mm-hmm. Because... I think you put Smart on Corver mm-hmm. and, and or uh, Jalen Brown on J.R. Smith. Mm-hmm. J.R. Smith is a weird temperamental guy. I didn't like him on New York. He was a weirdo. And, like, he's one of those guys that, like, oh, he looks like a thug. Mm-hmm. It's not like because he's got tattoos or he's got, like, that it was like that weird eye thing he'll do to you just, like, to recognize that attitude. you. attitude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and even that. No, it's because, like, he'll give up. Like, he's, like, he'll give up pretty easily. And he has an amazing three-point shot. And he's, I mean, they're all crazy athletes because they're in the NBA. But he is, and Corver has a great one too, but he, Corver is like a ragdoll too. He's like, almost like, once again, Kerman Arms, like if you get him in a spot where he's frustrated, uh, like Marcus Smart does, and I remember when he was on the Hawks, Marcus Smart made his life a living hell. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, hurt him. But yeah, you don't have a Kyrie. They don't have a Kyrie. They don't have another guy they can go to. Larry Nance is not a guy nope. uh, on the Cavs. Like, yeah, Tristan Larry Nance Thompson will take us over isn't the a guy. Kevin Love isn't a guy. Kevin Love could be a guy. This is where the... They can lose it. Where the seeds can lose it, they get out rebound by Kevin Love and Tristan Thompson, mm-hmm. uh, because tr- both those guys, Love and Thompson, are great on the offensive board. This board is, this is, I think, a big series from Monroe. Bingo, really man. do bingo. I really do That's because I, gonna, I think that if Monroe no, is the guy, Monroe's your guy. <laughs> I love Monroe. <laughs> I do. If Monroe is the guy that come, can come off the bench and be that solidifier under yep. the basket, I think that this is the series where the Celtics can win. Not even just under the basket. If he can draw, um, because Kevin Love is going to try to draw Al, for, uh, Al Horford away from the basket because he's yep. a legit three point shooter and leave things open for uh, LeBron or whoever to, to drive, mainly LeBron. I don't know who else. Right. But you have Monroe can take Thompson away from the He can do the same thing. He can take Thompson away from the basket because ha- Monroe can handle the ball. Mm-hmm. He can drive. Mm-hmm. So if you keep him out of that and then you just create, anytime you create a threat, anytime like Marcus Morris is another guy for the season who has to come through, and I'm a big fan of him. During the regular season, he was great. Hasn't really had a good playoffs. Nope. He had some decent moments uh, in the second round, but overall... Hasn't really been there for yeah. uh, us as we'd want him to be. Yep. He drives to the basket more, does more of that Ben Simmons, like mid-range stuff. Because uh, Morris can drive to the basket pretty well. You create that threat, they have to respect it. They and then, to. Just like LeBron, like you have to respect him, but you can give him his... If he gets 40 a night, the Cavs could still lose. They could. Because it just... If LeBron, like it's just a Belichickian kind of like... All right, your best player. In a way, the Celtics give the best might player even the ball. want. Yeah, and your, your right, second player is not going to be there. You want 35 him. a night? Go take it. Yeah. We're still going to beat you. Yeah. That and could very well be the game plan. Well, and I think you can guard him as best you can, and if you have, uh, what was it, Tatum on him, and let's say LeBron uh, takes out Tatum as far as, um, takes him out to dinner, does something, just takes him out like he's out of the game. He's not as much of a factor. Say that happens. I don't think that people are saying, but I don't think that will be the case. LeBron is a great defender, but I think 
uh, Tatum is fearless. He mm -hmm. went. How many times did he go after Embiid? And how many times? And that's quite a bit. Yeah, not the same Embiid. Embiid isn't a dumb player. Either. I don't no. think he's a dumb player. And the fact that he they made him look dumb in the series, though, I will yeah, say that. Sometimes, but he was he made a lot of great uh, blocks. He was a great defender. He made a lot of great moves offensively. So I would say LeBron. Hasn't really lost a step, maybe a little, because he's like, what is he, 33, 32? 33, yeah. Yeah, something like that. He's, yeah. he's there, but he's still in great shape, still can do whatever. Tatum can still get around. Tatum has a length that I don't think LeBron necessarily has that length. Mm -hmm. What LeBron has is like that spring. And Tatum has that too, Love, but the length of Tatum, I think, can get around and use the, the under the basket more. And you will see him either pass it a little more. Like there was that alley oop in the in the closing minutes of game That's five. That's right. There was to Big Al. Yeah. Playoff Al was amazing. And Al, he almost took off the damn uh, basket. It was like a shack. Cause I don't like. I don't know. Horford's got like a Phelps upper body thing going on. <laughs> his arms. His wingspan is massive. Yeah, it's crazy. He's like you know. He's just like a. Al has been the most clutch Celtic performer in the playoffs. Yeah, he's been Absolutely great. Absolutely has. And he just he game three, so he was fury. huge. Yep, he was huge in game three. Yeah, he just Al is just <clears throat> taking his game to a new level and showing people why he's not average. No, and he does a lot of stuff like him and Marcus Smart. Like they'll cr create these little picks that you don't see until you like mm. really watch the game film or you're really looking to see wherever. If you look off the ball, you'll see uh, Smart and Horford are amazing together because they create like these little barriers for everything. That yep. uh, Tatum driving to the basket. It was because uh, Smart had like a little pick on Reddit. Uh, they got such good chemistry. Yeah. And that's something that helps build championship style I think teams. So. so, the other thing too that I want to make sure that we discuss is we haven't even mentioned Jalen Brown. No. Jalen Brown's name, here's a guy that had his uh, hamstring injury. Back, what was it, game two in that series or whatever it was? Uh, no, it was actually game seven. Of, it was game uh, seven for the Bucs. The Bucs, yeah. And he's able to come out and still perform and have, you know, really solidified a lot the lineup. Yeah, the last game he was like 10 There's for 13. There's all this Jason Tatum love. We should be having the same kind of love for, you know, Jalen Brown. Oh, no, it's true. His name came up in that uh, trade rumor that I sent you the other day, too. For I don't Kawhi, trade Jalen Brown. For Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard. Leonard. No. Him and uh, Terry Rozier and uh, someone else. I mean, you could probably him. sell high for Terry Rozier after these playoffs. And it's tough, because I'd like to keep all these guys together. Because Terry Rozier is a great second unit, or great six man off the bench. What do you do next year? Okay, you're going to have Hayward and Kyrie, most likely, back. Then you also have to deal with the play of Terry Rozier. Is he a bench guy? Well, he's all. I mean, he could be a great six man. I mean, that's uh, was it. Andre Iguodala is a great uh, six man. I mean, that is very underrated, and that's a championship team if you have a decent, if you have a really good six uh, yeah. six man. And because they, I think they have him for another year. Him and Smart, I believe. Yeah. But, um, Smart is a restricted free agent at oh, the end okay. of the year, so they would right. have to resign. Which I think they will. I think they did extend. I'm not entirely sure. I think that they, I think that he will be back because yeah. the Celtics know that he's the big he's a big piece of their of puzzle. Their, yeah, of no, their he's puzzle. they need he's that. He's pretty great. He's, yeah. he's he's their Draymond Green. Yeah, uh, just not as good of a well. He can be um, offensively uh, capable, but when you need Marcus Smart to to shoot, sometimes you're you're already you know up uh, up that creek without a panel. Right. But Aaron Baines is another guy who is, um, I think, a one-year guy. And I think yeah. Monroe is like kind of a rental player. Yeah. I forget who else. But I'd like to retain those guys. But Larkin's mostly. probably one of those guys, too. Probably. He's a yeah. guy who could uh, who could go off. You could either get someone else or keep him on. Yeah. I mean, he's not going to be lots of, lots of names on, on the Boston teams this year that are going to have big question marks next to them. Sure. They will. Now, <clears throat> prediction time. You know my prediction. So I'm, seven, calling, yeah. I'm calling the Celtics in seven games. I think well, I said, like, I now I think now here's here's six, the difference five, between you yeah. and I. I think home court plays a massive advantage here for this series. If the Cavs had home court in their series, I would pick the Cavs. Yeah. But I am picking the Celtics because of that home court, because they've been so great at home, and because Drew Bledsoe will be coming to every single home game to be their lucky charm. Well, That's what, what he said. What else does they have to do? But, uh, <laughs> with his wine. He'll come with well, his, his wine from his vineyard. His winery, yeah, yeah, yeah. just <laughs> come on in, just give free wine to everyone, the kids, half off. What is your what is your uh, choice here? I'd have to go six or seven. It, it's Cleveland. It, it's always it's always been six or seven games when it comes to Boston Are you going Celtics Cleveland. or Cleveland? Celtics, okay. obviously. Have to go Celtics. Okay. I, I, I mean, I wouldn't want the Cavs to win. I'd hate to see the Cavs win. Are you uh, going to be different? 
I mean, we know you're, you're different. different. I mean, I, like what my prediction actually is. I mean, I think uh, the toss-up or the kind of, I guess, uh, wiggle room or D rat row. Yeah. It, it comes D down to games three and four in Cleveland and to see where sure. the series and, goes. And like if they can steal one from it. I could see the Seeds winning this in another five or six. I could see them doing that. Yeah. Will they? I don't know. I, I mean, play it safe. Say the Seeds in seven, but... This is a series that go either way. Is this might be one of the worst Cleveland LeBron Cleveland teams? Yes, but uh, not as bad because Kevin Love is there and he's still pretty decent. Yeah, and uh, not as bad as the team he brought to the finals against the Spurs and got wiped off right. the court. But right. I, I feel well, like man, it's, I think the seeds could do it. In, I would say season six. I, I feel like six. I feel like it's the uh, the LeBron James show again. Back when he first started in Cleveland. Yeah. So it's we're all we're all thing. pretty much saying that the Celtics is going to go to the finals. On, sure. a, on average, it's a six game win. I mean, Who's that going to be? Is it going to be Golden State? Yeah, I don't think uh, Houston has a shot. I mean, I think it might Celtics be a good have played game. Golden State very tough. Yeah, that, they don't have that Kyrie. Would be another though. interesting series. But it's also they play you know um, regular season Golden State. Yeah. So I mean, they've never. It'll, I think it'll be a fun series. I think it'll be more competitive. Yeah. And it'll be fun just to be there. And I think it'll be weird. I think whoever wins the East will get demolished by Golden State. Yeah. I don't know. Durant's not going to let it happen again. And Curry's coming back. I don't know. I think Curry that, is back, right? He is back. He yep. came back uh, with like the third game or second game for Pelicans. Again. Yeah. Who knows? Oh, you never know. Who and he might choke on his, you know. Mouth guard. Mouth guard. <laughs> <laughs> Which is always great because it always like picture him just like dropping and just, or like him dropping and then another one just comes out of his mouth. Like, just slowly, like another roll of like shark's teeth or something. It's just a weird. I got a great way to wrap up our segment here for the oh, NBA. Yeah. Ready? I need that camera on me. Uh oh. Uh oh. Feed me Bron Bron. Feed me him. Oh, no. <laughs> Give me Lord. LeBron. That's the barstool take. Oh, feed it? me LeBron. That's uh, the big thing. How would he Hashtag taste? Hashtag feed me LeBron. He's like rabid. Yeah, he, I think He's he is kind rabid. Of lean. Yeah. Very rabid. It'd Go be on. it'd be great to see tears rolling down his face again. Yeah. I don't think he'd care as much to be honest. <laughs> Sorry, he always, I don't, he always I don't think he's back fine. in Cleveland next year, actually, to tell really? you the truth. I think he's done. Maybe. Where would he go? <laughs> Miami. Miami, yeah. I, I, well, I, Lakers, I, that's I'm one thinking thing. it's going to be the Houston Rockets what? somehow. Some say Philadelphia. Could be Philly, too. That's what some people but are saying, I don't think too. he wants to get... I don't think he wants to... I don't think he wants to go in the East. I think he wants to go in yeah. the West. Yeah. L.A. might be the place. Yeah. Him and Paul George. All right. I'm going to not start with Jackie Bradley on our Red Sox thing because oh, I'm happy God. about it. <laughs> Alex Cora has put his big boy pants on this week, folks, and he's actually sitting people that deserve to be sat who aren't producing. It's amazing. Maybe he watched the show last week. I don't know. Maybe he did. Anyway, Red Sox had a big series against the Yankees this past week. It was not so good. Surprise, surprise. Red Sox lost two or three in the series. They did take the final game in the series with a nice five to four victory against the Yankees. Now they go to Toronto to wrap up the uh, end of this big long road trip that they had. Um, kind of with a better understanding of where they sit now. So right now we're even keel. The Red Sox and the Yankees are tied atop the division. It's amazing that even after that amazing start that the Red Sox had, there's even a tie. But the Yankees have been unstoppable. You two guys seen any of the series this week? I did, yeah. uh, A little bit of it. Let's look at the first thing that happened in this series was news of David Price. David Price has to start off this segment because... <sighs> Oh, I gotta actually end this early. I gotta play Fortnite with him. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Fortnite myth. Yeah, well, in a yeah. Couple, he invited. In a he minutes. called Phil. Make sure and I, you do your hand exercises. Yeah, yeah. Before I just you I do a, like okay. a jazz handy thing, and then I go. It's into, very important. <laughs> yeah. There was a report that came out uh, that said that David Price was going back to Boston to get his hand checked. We've all heard about the issues this season he's had with the circulation sort of thing. Um, he wanted the Red Sox felt it was in the best interest to go get it checked. David Price was uh, pulled from his start, which would be on Wednesday night of this past week. Um, that was another start that he takes himself pretty much out of facing the Yankees. If you remember the last time that he faced the Yankees, he got absolutely shellacked. I think and he was scared this time. I, I, I think. So the report came out after he got his hand tested that he has some sort of a carpal tunnel syndrome thing going on, which kind of means that you don't have any feeling in your hand, in your left hand. 
Um, we also heard a report that came out that said that David Price is a big gamer with Fortnite, and apparently that has something to do with his hand. Well, yeah, when you're when you're on the computer typing or playing video games for an extended amount of time, it, it causes a professional major league baseball pitcher that you paid thirty million dollars a season for pulls himself out of the rotation and says, "I can't throw because of this." I, I think I think it was an excuse just to Are get you out of pitching me? again. I think it was an excuse to get out of I'm pitching kind of against the Yankees on this, or just in general because he hasn't been pitching well. I think he pulled himself out. I think he tapped out and said, "Nope." Next man up, I don't want to face the Yankees. They're too good. Oh, even though. Which is a huge, you know, slap in the face to Alex Cora, really, if that's the reason. What do you think? Any, any different Yeah, no, I agree it? with Tom in, in a lot of ways. Like, I don't know. I think this is a not. I think this is just a cover for something. And maybe, you know, if it's Carpal Tunnel in his hands for playing Fortnite, I'm like, I guess. <laughs> if you're like a 70-year-old man, I don't know. <laughs> like, sure. Like, I think he... Mentally, he is a 70-year-old man. No, well, I mean, it all depends what 70-year-old man you're talking to. Some yeah. person like who So it could be like Chuck Norris and just be amazing. Sure, yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think he just... Mark this one in the show. We've I mean, had a Chuck is... Norris reference. Sure, wow. No, that's all right. Yeah. Mark it off. Yeah. Uh, and maybe he does have some weirdness in his hands they don't know about, and they're just like throwing every lane against the wall, and maybe he's the sacrificial lamb in this whole thing. Because... Mm -hmm. And maybe it is true. Maybe he has been playing too much, but I don't know, man. It seems like cause the, the game before. Is it got ridiculous so though, to, hear, to hear something like that? Kinda. It's ridiculous that that's a I'm part not of, a gamer. I'm just not. It's just a weird yeah. like thing to throw at and like, yeah, I don't care if he plays. I uh, honestly, I don't care if he plays games during the season or nope. whatever, because it seems like everyone does, you know, plays whatever. But it, when you need, if if your hands are hurting, you should stop. <laughs> it's just like you think it's, it's, like, it's a big hint that says, "Oh, oh yeah. maybe, maybe I should put it down I for like that a day no or two." No problem. Yeah, that's a... with anything that they do, so long as it doesn't impact your performance out sure. in the field. And a lot of the teams put and in you clauses. tap out from this. I mean, what a pansy! Well, no, what I mean, an absolute pansy. But also think about the team as well. Like probably better that he does tap out. Because, like, he wasn't pitching well at all. No, he wasn't. Well, it's true. But they yeah. didn't win the game anyway, so I, it didn't no. really make a huge... Uh, who what, knows if it made a difference, yeah. Uh, yeah he pretty no, well. the, no, it was Purcello was the first game. Game. Now, Pomerantz on Tuesday night when he pitched, he had a little boo-boo on his finger that they had to doctor up and make sure that he could go out there. So credit to credit to Mr. Drew for putting his big boy pants on My and finding Lord. a way to pitch. You are just derisively... You're just Goodness running gracious. Out. Well, what if he did have, like, a crazy, like, oh, what's this, some alien bubble on my hand? Go or... talk to oh. Kurt Schilling. Yeah. He, oh, come on, he, man. That's, he, like, the worst. Go talk to Kurt Schilling. Didn't blood he, sock and all. Didn't he have a cut worst. in his hand, like, last season, and he had to get it, like, doc he had to get it medicated or something before something it went like back that. out again? Weird. Good God. But these he players a decent game. Some of, the, these, some of these players, just, they don't have any toughness in them. What do you, it's not like they're in the, the trenches of, like... Good like Desert Storm or something. I don't know. I'd be like, it seems like all these screw this. Oh, I got a hangnail. I can't pitch today. Uh, my thumb hurts. Like, goodness. Like, well, they all are Baby Huey. Good they God, they are. Ugly. I don't know, man. I think This yeah. team isn't going anywhere if these guys don't step it up and get some... Well, he pitch. What do you care? You just carry guys... They, 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 they did, and I'm going to give them credit for that. Why I are you mean, giving him crap for just getting, like, a Band-Aid, pretty much? That's what he needed. He needed a Band-Aid or that, something. I don't know, but he pitched uh, well. I mean, he pitched decently. He ended up pitching very and who, well, and I give him credit for, for that. That's I give him I'm credit for it. Who lost I it? I yelled at him. Yeah. Who lost it for him? Yeah, who lost it for him that game? Tuesday night's game. Wasn't it the bullpen? That was uh, the bullpen. Who lost that oh, game Oh, was it? Them? Yeah, Kimbrough, wasn't it? Was that no, the first that game? No, that was Wednesday night's game. Was it Smith, or was it? Who lost that game to them? Oh, because they gave up. It was yeah, because he had a four nothing lead, right? Yeah, and he they had a big lead, and they gave Why up four. Why am I drawing a blank on Tuesday's game? Because we don't Palmer care was about two the bullpen. <laughs> They're so bad. The we bullpen don't is their so name. such a train wreck. Such mm -hmm. a train wreck. You know, Wednesday night's game. That was the one that came. That around. was the one with uh, Hanley hit the game, go ahead six to five home run. Yeah, yeah. And the eighth inning comes out, and one out. Matt Barnes, who's blocked me on Twitter, just throwing that really? out there, yeah, like. What this did you guy, do to him? I, I told him that he stinks. I told him that he needs to learn how to pitch. Oh, man. And he blocked me, so. 
That's pretty great. Well, so. he, he got yelled at by a uh, reporter the other night, too. So. What, what happened? <laughs> One of the reporters yelled at me. Who? Who? About Drew Pomerantz. Jesus, why they, does they care? I, it's ridiculous. I They're so sensitive. They she, kind of are. They, they need Desident on their they, butt or they, something. They said, they said uh, I'm not going to mention the reporter's name, but she... They, he or she? She, well, here, here she, she yelled at me. Said well, that, hey, surprise, surprise, surprise. Pitchers need their hands to pitch the ball, like throw the ball. They need their arms. I will say, yeah, you will. like, like he doesn't know what the I pitchers know. need to I, throw I a know. ball. But based on the conversation we just had about you yelling about someone getting a band aid, I think that's not too far off for her to yell at you. <laughs> you need a band aid to pitch with your arm. Use your shoulder or your elbow. <laughs> that's probably what I tweeted. That's, that is kind of your cadence. Uh, but I, gotta, I, I gotta remind our audience yeah. too that yes, it's an act. Sometimes yeah, yeah, sure. I'm just trying to get it into yeah, them sure, so they sure. can play better. So I don't know. I don't know. You, I'll see. We'll we see. we if, say if what we mean. If you do see any things that are out there, know. just know that I'm doing it kind of joking and sarcastically a little I don't bit. Know people. But some don't, people don't can't pick it. up on it. Sure. It's, it's just real funny. Well, well, it's hard. It's hard through being picking it up online. Last night I was rooting for Koji to come out of the bullpen. I mean, and somebody said it's 2018. Like I know. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah, you. I, know. I didn't know. I think that's one thing. But yeah. I mean, some people just don't have it up there. Sometimes you, you like to get a rise out of people on Twitter. Oh, I love it. I I love it. Wow, but but here, you are, but here, but here we but here we say like get oh they they're brutal and the Red Sox like Pedroia's blocked me. Bad Barnes really? has blocked me. Um, oh, at two. Uh, David yeah, Price, I'm sure, has blocked me by now. We we uh, I, I but we say what we we with say what we mean. Yeah, yeah. With him. I had but, a binky and a blanket with a bottle. And poor I said, David Price? I said, poor little baby. <laughs> poor little baby. Uh, why do they care? I don't understand. Like, it just... Why not care at that point? Because they take things too... Baseball players take things too seriously. Oh, my God. It's so true. Like, ho like hockey, yeah, hockey players... Just... Hockey players are like, yeah, whatever. Like, yeah. I'll just take that on my back and carry it around and, you I'll know, use out. it in a game. I'll just hit someone. Because they can. Or I'll lick someone's face. You know, whatever yeah, works. So, yeah. <laughs> this doesn't but, taste like strawberries. <laughs> Overall, oh, what we're trying to get to here is... There are some players on the team which are excellent. Mookie Betts is having a great year. Yeah. Uh, Xander's doing well. Even Hanley's you know, Hanley's playing, playing pretty Mitch consistent Moreland. baseball. Uh, Moreland, Mitch Moreland, yeah. when he gets into the lineup. J.D. Martinez last J.D. Martinez. Yeah. Didn't he hit the go-ahead? Such a great move. Such a great move. I lobbied for this for how long? Yeah, I don't know. Since he was for, a free agent with Arizona. Yeah, since, when I, since September of last year, I said, I want J.D. Martinez on this team. Well, were you a guy who wanted him instead of Carlo? I thought it was going to be less expensive than Giancarlo to give yeah. up. And I Giancarlo, wanted him yeah. because of the free agency stuff. I still like Giancarlo. Yeah. And you saw from that series why he's such a good player. But I think it evens out. J.D. Martinez and Stanton over the long well, haul. I like, I like J.D. Martinez he's over... such a professional hitter. I like J.D. Martinez over Stanton because Stanton hasn't played in the American League yet. And playing in the uh, division that he's playing in is, is tough to play in, as we all know. Uh, a lot of National League players that have come over to the Red Sox have struggled yep. in that division or in the American League in general. And mm -hmm. um, I th it, it took... It's taken what forty something games for John Carlo to actually start hitting the ball yep. well, like he usually does. So I, I and JD's just been yeah. as consistent as consistent. Well, he's been he's played in the American League before, so he he has the experience that I mean, the the Red Sox would like. And I will tell you that I like JD Martinez much better in the outfield. I will tell you that. So I think we might be seeing the final days of Jackie Bradley, which finally wow. I can rest assured that the player that I've wanted not on this team for about four years. Might actually get released. Four soon. years, that's a little strong. Three years. Three, Three years. Because he had a great rookie. <laughs> we'll shorten it another year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You make a good point. Two it was years. a little strong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Three you finally months. see yeah. Mookie Betts in center field. Oh, Sorry, okay. during the series, during the Yankees there. JD Martinez was in right, Ben Intendi was in left. I think you'll see different matchups with Ben Intendi going to left, uh, center. You'll see Mookie back to right, JD to left. Um, but this team is much better off without Jackie Bradley. It's sad to say it, and but Mookie, no, it Mookie sad. started it started off it, the score in, uh, in yeah. the last game. Too, now the so. other the other the other move that we need to keep our eyes on now is the whole catching scenario because Vasquez is just not cutting it right now. So not. Swihart gonna Swihart needs his yeah. chance. He needs is his it, chance. Yeah. Yeah. We've and only been saying this for five show, five yeah, shows now, so thing. you know. Hopefully, that's the next thing listening? that we're probably going to be seeing yeah. in the next week. Core, are see, you listening? Is yeah. to see how it goes. But the problem here is the pitchers are so comfortable pitching to Leon and uh, Vasquez. Yeah. So the pitchers need to get comfortable with throwing to Swihart 
it needs to happen sooner rather than later. Maybe it's what Price needs. <laughs> maybe it maybe, is. Yeah. Maybe it is. Um, well, anything maybe else maybe here in our Red Sox? Maybe a big giant hug. Yeah. He just does. Yeah, he needs like, a good sock in the face by Dennis like, Eckersley. He needs his blanket, yeah. he needs his blanket oh, and his bottle and his binky, and he'll be all Eck set is the go. perfect jerk <laughs> for fans and players alike. Love he's Eck. just... Love Eck. Uh, a lovely POS. I do. Lovely. Absolutely. I do anything else for our Red Sox? I, I don't think so. I think we're done on that. I like uh, the I mean, series yeah, against yeah. Toronto. We're looking forward to yeah, that. What a, year for, what a year for Toronto fans this year. Oh, Toronto, <laughs> really. Well, Toronto, they're not too far. They're like four games out, aren't they? Well, I'm, talk, I'm talking oh, like hockey, rapid, basketball. Hockey and, and, you know, and you know, they're probably going to choke eventually in baseball. So. Probably, yeah. Poor guys. Well, anyways, we hope you enjoyed our episode here on Face to Fact. We covered a lot. We covered the Bruins breakdown, the Celtics preview for the Cavs, and, of course, the Red Sox with their week in New York, and then on to Toronto. We will see you next time for another episode here of Face the Facts. I am Nick Face. It's for uh, Phil and Tom. Thank you for joining us here today. Adios. We will see you next time. Goodbye.